Heather Gabriel or Hot Not Hide. Now on the brink of shutdown. Now on the brink. Hello everybody, it's your girl Jay and today I am here with my May wrap up for 2023 part 2 of 3. So if you're interested in the other books that I read this month, those will be linked down below for you to check out. But I read a total of 15 books this month, so without further ado, let us get started. I'm going to start off with the banger that I had for this month because the rest of the books are pretty mediocre. So the first book that I'm going to talk about for this part of the wrap up is Highly Suspicious and Unfairly Cute by Talia Hibbert. I gave this a 5 out of 5 stars. This follows Bradley Graham and Celine Bangura, who used to be best friends, but now they are sworn enemies. They both end up joining a survival competition where the grand prize is a chance at a scholarship for the university of their choosing. As they spend more time together, they start to realize that maybe they aren't enemies after all, and it's kind of the story of that. This was my first Talia Hibbert novel and so many people love this author and I must say I was not disappointed. I loved these characters so stinking much. They felt like real people. They were definitely very relatable. I really loved watching their relationship develop and change as the story went on. I am a sucker for the grumpy sunshine pairing and then pair that with the friends to enemies to lovers. I was into it. I adored the inner monologues of both of these characters. I love that we got it from both Brad and Celine. I think that they were both very witty and very funny. I was laughing at multiple different parts of this story. I really like how Bradley's OCD was handled. I think that the author definitely took a lot of care in those topics and I also really loved watching Celine's journey of self-discovery and how she realized that she wasn't just her accomplishments and her father's abandonment. She is so much more than that. It was just really great to see. Also, big fan of the supportive families in this for both Celine and Brad. I think that it was really nice to see two families that actually really cared about each other in a novel. I also really liked the side characters in this. I think that they all had unique personalities and were genuinely there to actually propel the story forward rather than just being part of a plot line. Overall, really enjoyed this. We'll definitely be picking up more Talia Hibbert in the future as soon as possible. I gave it a 5 out of 5 stars. Highly recommend this. The next book that I read was not as good as the last one. It is Funeral Girls for Dying Girls. This is by Cherie Demeline and I ended up giving this a 2.5 out of 5 stars. This follows 16 year old Winifred who lives in the cemetery where her father works. When she was younger she had a lot of people believing that the cemetery was haunted as they spotted her on the grounds. Now on the brink of shutdown, Winifred needs to find a way to save her home before she is forced to leave. Enter a real-life ghost named Phil who was a young girl who died many many years ago and it's kind of like how they help each other. I did enjoy the heavy focus on family in this. There's also a lot of exploration on grief and self-discovery, which I think was really well done. My biggest issue with this story was that I did not vibe with this main character at all, which made it very hard for me to immerse into the story. I just did not give a shit about anything that was happening to her or was going on in her life. I also feel like there was so much fat phobia in this book and I just got sick of reading it real quick. I just don't think that this book was for me. I don't necessarily think it was a bad book. I just personally did not enjoy it so I ended up giving it a 2.5 out of 5 stars. The next book that I read was My Dear Jekyll. This is a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde retelling by Kaylin Barron and I ended up giving it a 3 out of 5 stars. This follows two young men named Gabriel and Henry. They are both attending medical school in London. The two grow closer as the years progress in the school and whispers of their relationships start traveling around the campus. When Henry is expelled after two years, Gabriel is devastated. Then Henry grows distant and Gabriel doesn't really understand why until he meets Hyde, who is another young man that he witnessed entering the Jekyll residence. I want to say that I loved this, but honestly I was a little bit disappointed with the story. I really like this author's other writing, but this one I just didn't vibe with as much. Although I enjoyed the story, I wasn't the biggest fan of either Gabriel or 
Henry, so I found it very hard to connect with their characters. I think that their relationship developed far too quickly. <laughs> we never really got to see any of that growth or development of the relationship. It was just they met, they're now in love. There was nothing in between to show how close they'd gotten. I don't know, I almost wish that there was more than just Gabriel's point of view. Maybe if there was points of views from Henry and Hyde, then I would have been able to feel more of a connection with those characters. I did love that Bayron decided to make the story much more diverse by making both characters black and gay in Victorian London. I think that the exploration of internal and external homophobia, racism, power imbalances, and sexual assault were really well done. I think that the author did a really great job with those conversations. But overall, I just think that it was a decent read. I didn't love it, but I can't say that I truly enjoyed it, so three out of five stars. The next book that I have is called Against the Current. This is by Olivia Matthews, and this is another one I gave three out of five stars. This follows Lindsay Murray and her family who open a bakery called Island Spice bakery in New York City. On the day of the opening, Lindsay gets into a very heated and very public argument with the head of the rival bakery, Claudio. The next day, he turns up dead and Lindsay finds herself at the top of the suspect list. So, of course, Lindsay decides to start an investigation of her own to clear her name and it's kind of the story of that. I didn't find this to be anything spectacular. I wouldn't say I didn't like it, but I also wouldn't say that I was very engaged in the story. I just kind of was there when I was reading it. I think that there was a very big cast of characters and multiple, multiple suspects that kind of made it hard to follow at times. I did like the family dynamics in this and I think that they were very supportive of one another, which again, loved to see. Grandma was definitely my favorite of the bunch. I thought she was so fun. I also really liked how much Lindsay grew as a character. She went from a very meek and mild girl to somebody who was able to stand up for herself, which I really loved to see. But like I said, I just wasn't fully engaged in this, so I ended up giving it a three out of five stars. And then the final book that I'm going to talk about for this part of the wrap-up is The Cloisters. This is by Caddy Hayes, and this is another one I gave three out of five stars. So this follows Anne, who travels to New York during the summer in the hopes of becoming an intern at the Med, but when she arrives, she is transferred to the Cloisters. There, she is introduced to head researcher Patrick Rowland, who is interested in the occult and tarot cards. Anne becomes very close with one of the researchers named Rachel, who is kind of the it girl on the scene, and they work together to discover the background and history of this mysterious tarot deck. This was such a meh book for me. I found it to be very slow, very boring. I just could not care less while I was reading it. I also just wasn't a big fan of Anne, the main character. She was just very self-loathing and it never improved at all. I wasn't the biggest fan of the romance either. Honestly, the only thing that kept me reading was the like frenemy situation between Anne and Rachel. I honestly thought that it was going to be a sapphic thing and they were going to end up together. It did not happen, so if that's what you're thinking is going to happen in this, uh, don't read it because you will be disappointed. I definitely do think that their complicated relationship was the best part of the story though. I was also intrigued by the tarot deck and the history behind that, which was another reason I kept reading. I'm gonna be honest, I probably was very generous with my three star rating, but I did also really like the cover, so it's fine. Three out of five stars. Like, it's not a bad book. It just wasn't for me. All right, everybody. So those were the next five books that I read for the month of May 2023. If you're interested in the first five books, then go check out the first wrap-up. If you're interested in the last five books, go check out the last wrap-up. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!